It's the Gear Tester here, and welcome to Range Report 2 on the Glock 17. You know, I have a lot of experience, years and years of experience, and thousands and thousands of rounds downrange from Glock 9mm handguns primarily the Glock 19 and the Glock 26. So when I purchased this Glock 17, I realized that that shooting experience would not be significantly different. So here in this second range report that I'm doing on the Glock 17, rather than focusing on just standing and shooting this pistol, I've decided to incorporate a seated position primarily here. I spend a lot of time at work, as many of you do, and most of the time I'm seated when I'm there behind a computer and I'm also armed and I have not spent enough time practicing from a seated position with my firearms having to draw and move around the table and that's one of the things I'm going to be doing today I also spend a lot of time driving and again that's another seated position and so because of this I'm going to incorporate a seated position into the shooting I'm doing today with my Glock 17 so that I am uh, building a skill set and also getting good footage and good experience and good practice and training with my Glock 17 Although the primary focus of this video is the Glock 17, I will be using as a backup pistol my trusty Glock 43. I'll be running my Glock 17 in this Galco Fletch High Ride holster. It's an outside the waistband holster and it does have a thumb strap. I've been using this Galco Fletch High Ride holster for the better part of eight years and I primarily run my Glock 19 and my Glock 26 out of this holster, but I'm using it today because it has this open bottom design and so it allows me to run my Glock 17 easily in it. The particular sights that I'm running on this pistol are the Ameriglo UC sights. They have a green tritium dial there with an orange outline and then they have a U-notch black serrated rear sight. I find that this sight is easy to acquire quickly but if I want to be a little more precise and intentional I think it also has that ability that U-notch with the uh, flat top up here allows me to kind of pop it up, shoot quickly, or, or drop the notch down and be a little more careful and be more precise as I shoot. So, I so what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna wait about 30 seconds. I'm gonna be sitting here drinking water. Then you're gonna call out to me, threat in some manner, gun, knife, threat. I'll engage paper twice, shooting for the top number two ring there. Engage the steel targets each once, and then shoot for the number two target once again on the paper down there. And we'll see how I do. All right, so you guys just saw me shoot that here with my Glock 17, I engaged the paper target, and I got up close here on the paper. Okay, one, two shots there, and then I got all the steel targets, and then I clipped the top. <clears throat> of the piece of paper there on the paper target down there but I didn't get shots on it so that's just reality and we're gonna run this a couple more times now Threat. Okay guys, so I just did this again from the table. I uh, did not do as well on this first paper target here. Just got one shot and then completely missed. Then I hit my steel targets uh, and then I was able to put two rounds down here on this target. So I did better down range. The first time I ran this drill, I completely missed uh, this target or I put one shot in there. Okay, and then we put fresh targets up. And then this is me shooting here. So I did better further away because I took a little more time. I did poorer uh, at the closer up paper target because I was rushing that. So there's a number of things I noticed as I was shooting my Glock 17 today. One of the first things I noticed is that when drawing from this holster, I found that I had to be intentional about drawing the pistol just a little bit further than I normally would. So I was finding I was drawing the pistol like this and then trying to get it out of the holster and it was snagging a little bit. And that was 
probably not evident to you as you watch this video because of the angles that the camera was pointed at, but it was to me. And the reality is I've done a lot more shooting uh, with the Glock 26 than any of my other Glock handguns. And you can see that the barrel difference there is not a huge amount, but, but from a training standpoint, I've trained myself to basically just start to pull the handgun out of the holster and instantly start to pivot because the barrel on my 26 is so much shorter. In the case of the 17, I was finding that I had to be very intentional about getting the gun out. As I watch the video uh, footage and as I think about uh, shooting the Glock 17 here, it feels to me like I'm being a little bit faster on target and from shot to shot or from target to target with the 17. And I think that that's just because it's bigger. It's a bigger pistol and I've got more mass in it so I'm being able to move it and, and I'm being able to handle the recoil from the 9mm better. Uh, it's also potential that these sights are being helpful to me. I haven't shot um, thousands of rounds with this gun yet, but I've, I've shot hundreds at this point, and I am liking this sighting system that's on the gun. And so maybe the combination of a slightly larger pistol and the sights are being beneficial to me. Although I, I shoot the excess big dot sights very well and very quickly. Another point I've been pondering is magazines. And I don't think there's any way that I would mix up a Glock 10 round Glock 26 mag with a Glock 17 round mag. Okay, I don't see any problem where I could encounter issues with that. It's pretty clear to me uh, when I hold this in my hand that I know that that's not going to go into the gun. I also only have three of these mags and I keep one in my 26 at, when I carry it or use it and then the other two sit in a range bag and never get used. So there's no possibility that I'm going to be end up carrying my 17 and then accidentally trying to have a backup magazine, okay, a 10 rounder and then of course it won't fit and it falls out. I tend to run my Glock 19 quite a bit. I use it regularly. And when it comes to getting the magazines from my Glock 19 and the Glock 17 mixed up, that is something that I am concerned about. And here's why. I can run the 17 round mags in the 19 and I've never encountered any problems with over insertion. I don't think that that's actually a reality with the double stack magazines the way they're created and I've never had a reliability issue so I, I run 17 round mags regularly in my 19 and my 26 okay the, the longer magazines that are designed for the Glock 17 however what I'm worried about is the fact that I might get mixed up and I might be carrying my 17 and then somehow unintentionally be carrying a Glock 19 mag you can see there is a difference here in the length of these magazines which means that I can try and insert a Glock 19 mag in and uh, it might or might not stay depending on the situation but it will not run. It will not run ammunition to the gun. So I could be in a life and death situation. I could be shooting my pistol, go for a reload and not have any additional bullets because I've got this magazine here that is too short and I have a lot of these Glock 19 15 round mags. And so from a standpoint of reliability, from a standpoint of ease of organizing my gear and equipment, I'd probably better serve by two 19s if I wanted to keep the 17, which I think I'm going to still end up keeping the 17, but I'd be probably better served in terms of having my gear and equipment organized and minimizing human error by just having two 19s instead of a 17 and a 19. So that's just something to consider. There's also the reality that a number of my friends have Glock 19 pistols. And what ends up happening is if I'm carrying my 17 and we go out shooting, so let's say there's no self-defense component here, there's no life and death uh, realities, but I get to the range and I maybe only have one or two mags. I can't use their magazines, but they can use my mags. So again, in that case, I'd be better served by two 19s instead of a 17 and 19. So that's my worries and concerns. I assume you, my viewers and subscribers, are tuning into the Gear Tester channel for the purpose of hearing the things that I uh, think about, the things that I worry about, and that's just one of the things I worry about when it comes to 17s and 19s being run together. Probably better to just run 19s, but there you go. I, I actually really like shooting this pistol, and I, I'm struggling. I've talked a little bit about the sights, but I, I think I really like this gun because of the sights, and so I may just need to buy an, another pair of these sights and put them on a 19 and potentially sell my 17. So there you go. I continue to enjoy shooting the Glock 17. I think it's an excellent gun. I can see why so many police departments uh, in the 80s really liked this gun and why they picked it up. It's so lightweight. It's very easy to shoot. It has a significant 
a level of capacity with 17 rounds in the gun and is just an excellent, excellent firearm. If you like this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel for more quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear. This is the Gear Tester signing off.